Chain breaker. Break every chain. And we realize that some of us uh, have never been bound, so we don't know what, what the song really means to break every chain. And, and some of us, where we're bound it, we don't mind it. So, so the song doesn't resonate in our heart. It doesn't move in our spirit. But when you've been bound long enough, when you're tired of being tired of being tired, that's when you cry and say, I want to feel the power of Jesus. I want to feel the power of God. And I want to experience a chain-breaking moment. Anybody ever had a, a chain breaking moment when you realize that the chain really was off? Because sometimes we get up, we say, I, I know I'm through with this. I know this, I'm over this, it passed. And when you try to reach for the thing that you desire, you feel like that elephant with the chain on his foot that is just out of reach. But when you give it to God, he's a, a chain breaker. And, and like the song said, if you listen, you could hear the chains falling then you know you've been set free. And there's nothing like freedom. It's nothing like a person that's been set free to talk about freedom. And if we've been free, we ought to be able to praise God without any inhibitions, without any strain, without any uh, uh, prompting. Nobody needs to tell you how, God good, how good God is. Just to hear his name make you want to remember how the chains fell and you've been set free. Let's go to our Father in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity now, Lord, that truly you have set us free. You, you are the chain breaker. You, you release the chains of our heart. You release the chains of our mind. And now we're free to worship and serve you like you deserve. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you that you are God that knows all, sees all, and everything you do is good. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be in your presence once again. Father, now that we surrender ourselves to you, we ask you to take full control. Take over and do what only you can do in this service, Lord. And we'll be ever so careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Chain breaker. Giving honor to God and to who is in control of our lives. If we realize that what we are, if we are anything at all, is because of what he made us. And wherever we're going to go, it's going to be because he brings us there. And we got to realize that he, he's not just a God. He is the God. And besides him, there is none other. And once we get that in our, uh, in our hearts and in our mind, we'll see God in a different light. We'll live better. We'll talk better. We'll reason better. But sometimes we, we, we think our God is small and sometimes we think he's large and sometimes we think he's not there and sometimes we think he don't even care. But he's a God that knows all and he always cares. And it's because of the love he has for us. I want to read this scripture to you and, 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 and we'll get started. Giving honor to Pastor in his, in his absence. Glad he got a break. Thankful for you to be here. Because you know, we could have been some other places. Some places that we didn't even know we was there. Because whether you realize it or not, some woke up this morning on the other side of eternity. But we still on this side. We got something to be thankful for. Call your attention to the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 13. We're going to do this and we're going we gonna to get out of here. Not soon, but we're going to get out of here. Because I don't want to spoil y'all. Chapter 13, verse 24. It says, And another par parable put forth he unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blades were sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servant of the house 
holder, householder came and said unto him, Sir, did is not thou so good seed in, the, in thy field? From whence then has it tares? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather ye the wheat into my barn. Truly the grass withered and the flower faded thereof, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I like reading out a King James version, because King James, have, he just have a different way of, of, of putting. I know they got the NIV and the SBC and the ED, all them, and the English, to, to, and, and, and all those, but it's just certain scriptures just read different in, in the King James Version. You know, you, you, the 23rd Psalms read different in the 23rd. In, in, in the King James, when you read it, the Lord, no, 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? That, that's, that's different. When you get the English, they don't use the same term. They say, and there was a light, and we said, no. I, I, like, I like the King James because it, 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 it got a certain spunk to it, a certain hit to it. Now, to get the other Bibles, you can get a better translation and all that, but I like the King James. But look what the, 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 this chapter says. We're going to talk about uh, weeds and wheat. Tares is just weed. weeds. Weeds and wheat. Brother Frankie did a good job on the, uh, uh, speaking on the uh, saws and stuff. Uh, if, y all, y all, if you miss it, you should have been here. But uh, he, he did a good job, and I, I love the way his illustrations was and when he talked about the heart. And, and when I read this passage here, it says, uh, in that verse 24, you know what it says? The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. He said nothing about the saw. Nothing about the saw. So now you got to figure out why, why he didn't talk about the saw. He, if you want to sow a, a, a good seed in the field, look like the saw ought to be right. Well, when you, if you want to know exactly what he's talking about, you can read verses 37 through 41 in that same chapter. And it, it'll, it'll tell you everything he's talking about because the field is the world. And if you know... Your Bible, it says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. So it was his. And what he was saying is that he sowed good seed in his field. Nothing wrong with the soil. The soil is not the problem. Nothing wrong with the seed. The seed was, was good seed. But he gave us a parable. Now, a parable is a... a, a an earthly illustration of a, a more spiritual, with a spiritual meaning. He want to give you a spiritual truth about what heaven is like. And if you ask anybody and say, what do you think heaven is like? So first thing someone will say, oh, heaven is like uh, 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 streets of gold, it's happiness, it's joy, it's peace, yeah, it's, it's all that. But Jesus said, I want to teach you what the kingdom of heaven is like. Because you see, we, we want to go on streets of gold and walk through the pearly gates and we want to see the 12 foundations and we want to be in God's glory and some of us might not make it in. We're talking about a picturesque uh, view of something that we're not striving to get to. He said the kingdom of heaven is like an, unto a uh, a man who sowed good seed in his field. When he sowed the good seed in his field, in, in his field you got to think about the earth. What did God put in, in, in his earth? Think of, let, let's go all the way back to Genesis. You remember what Adam, my boy Adam, 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 Adam. <laughs> Adam had no problems, nothing. Boy, had it made, boy. I mean, 
All he had to do was, you know, name some animals with God giving to me. He taking care of business and all that. God put a good seed in them. There was no sin. But like the, the, the story say, an enemy came in and sowed some seed. The, what he put in there was good. Now, now, the good seed that God put in Adam, it wasn't a gospel because there was no sin. It didn't need no gospel. But he gave him the truth. And that's what we miss in, 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 in the kingdom of God. We don't like the truth. The truth does something to us even when it's true about us. It's, it's, it's hard to accept the, the, the truth. When somebody look you right in the eye and say, you just mean. I love you, but you, you just mean. You, you, just, you just mean, 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 mean. And it might be true. But you know you don't like to hear that. They tell you you're tight. You're tight, you're tight. You don't want to give a dime to nobody. You're tight. It's the truth. And you tell them, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not tight. I'm conservative. I, I, I'm, I'm a safe. But, but the truth does something. But he sowed truth into Adam. And guess what? The enemy came in, sowed a seed. He didn't make Eve eat. He didn't make Adam eat. He just dropped the seed. And we have a choice. Eve took her choice and said, yeah, I guess I'm going I'm to I'm I'm take a bite of this and see what it's like. Nothing happened. Adam said, well, it ain't nothing happened. But what did God say, Adam? The truth. Ah, I'm just going to go take a little snack and see what it's going to be like. And the expression came out, all hell broke loose. And he messed up, but when he realized it, it was too late. Now, when, 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 when Jesus comes in on him, when, when he's talking to, in the New Testament, he said the kingdom of heaven is like a man that sowed good seed. He's talking about himself. He sowed good seed in his own field. How many of y'all like people just trespassing over your stuff? In your yard? What, what you doing? I just feel like walking in your yard. What, I was getting some of them flowers. What? You're trespassing. Or we say trespassing, not trespassing. But, but, but it's, it's something that's not, it's uncomfortable. You just can't come in my yard and, and, and do something. I live out in the country and, and I came home one day and they got stakes in my yard. They, they're building some solar panels out there. And I'm looking at that, I say, what that stake for? And I see some little writing. I look down there, another one, three, I look. I said, who put all this thing? So I seen some guys working. So I, I get in my truck, I drive. I said, who put them stakes up in, 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 my, in my yard? But they happen to, to be Hispanic, and they start. I know they can speak English, but they'll tell them to do that No, no, I said, yeah, you, you know who put that. I said, but I'm going to take them stakes out of that. He said, oh, uh, uh, it's, it's the property line. I said, no, the property line start over there. Them stakes over there, they're coming out of that. Because I don't want them trespassing. Um, and God said, this is mine, and somebody trespassed. But they didn't trespass uh, by force. We let them. And that became a problem. We, 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 we let them. He sowed the good seed, and then you let them. Look, look at this, this, this kingdom. Kingdom is, Jesus' kingdom is not of this world. It is centered not in the palace or on the throne, but is in the hearts and lives of, of his followers. That's, that's what his kingdom, he wants his kingdom to be in us. He wants the righteousness and the truth to be in us. And we have a problem with the truth being in us. How many of us know that there is a God? We all raise our hand. But how many of us willing to do what he said? Sometimes, well, you know, we got, to, and we don't, but we know there's a God. And, 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 and parents, we know this. We, we can tell, say, look, I done been through this. I done, I done did this. I done struggled in this. I messed up over here. Don't do it. Okay. And soon as they leave, guess what? They go do it. Is it, they don't know that you're your parent, they're a parent? You, they don't know that you done went through it? Yeah, they know all of that. But it's the trust to do what you ask them to do. 
All the, all the parents that told their children to do something and they didn't believe them, raise your hand. That's all of us, because they don't listen. And we the same way. We were the same way. The good seed, the good seed. A good seed does this. A good seed produces an offspring and signifies a spiritual fellowship without reference of, to relationship or race. What, what Christ did for us, he didn't put no boundaries on it. He said, I'm doing this be, to you, for you because I love you. Not because you're rich, not because you're poor, not because you're tall or short, not because you're black, white, Chinese, Mexican, or they got about 50 others. You could, it's not because of that. Amen. I'm doing it because it was mine, I love it, and I want it back. Amen. It's something that, to, to lose something and, and not want it. But God, we, 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 we lost our fellowship with him, and guess what? He wanted it back. We done the wrong and he still wanted us back. He called us, we put our hands over our ears and he still wanted back, wanted us back. He actually invited us in, we turned it down, but he still wanted us back. That's why the Bible said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Cause you know what? Where we was, we didn't care nothing about him, but he still loved us enough to want us back. The soil was not the problem. The good seed was not the problem. The field was his, but an enemy came in. When you look at verse 37, it tells, he said, and he, uh, uh, he, said, and he answered and said unto them, because they asked him what to explain the parable, this is what he said. He that sowed the good seed is the son of man. He that sowed the good seed is the son of man. God, Christ himself sowed the truth. And that's what he expected to come up. But somewhere, an enemy came in. Now, we can read 37 to 41 and see, uh, uh, it's kind of like a cliff note of what he said, but we're going to do 24 to 30 because we get to break down some things that's in it. We get to see what the problem really was. When you get to verse 25, this is, look how it reads. But while men slept, the enemy came in and sowed tares. He separated the son of man from, man from men. He separated the son of man. We, we would get to say, well, Lord, you were sleeping, you let him sneak up in there? No, no, no. He wasn't asleep. That's how you know who done it. Because he, he wasn't asleep. But he said, men slept. And the enemy came in. Men slept and the enemy came in. Let's look at, 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 at Psalms 121. Most of it, y'all know Psalms 121, verses 3 and 4. Men slept. How many of y'all remember that scripture? Y'all remember that? He will not suffer thy foot to move. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. He that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Uh, go to uh, 2 Chronicles. Listen at, look at this one. 2 Chronicles 16 and 9. For the eyes of the Lord do what? Run to and fro throughout the whole earth, showing himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolish, wherein henceforth thou shalt have war. They messed up. Their heart wasn't toward God. But the eyes of the Lord go to and fro. He, he, he don't sleep. He don't sleep. He, he, he's always watching. He's always... You know. How did the enemy do this? God wasn't asleep. God saw him do it. But he gave us something that we love. Free will. Free will, free will to choose. How, how many of us would love our children if they didn't have free will? Or maybe I should reverse that. How many of our children would love their parents? <laughs> y'all children don't answer that because we know y'all don't think y'all got free will now. <laughs> but if, it was, if, if, you didn't have, if you didn't have a choice, 
you would be a slave. You don't have no choice. And some of us came up, well, a few of us came up in old school. We, we really didn't have a choice. Kids get up today, oh, I want to go to Popeye's. I want to go to McDonald's. I want Burger King. I can't, why can't we go? Where are beans? You can eat them beans and go to bed. That's it. <laughs> we never told mama what to cook. Come on, brother. We're not there. She's not asking us, what y'all feel like eating tonight? Uh, where y'all want to go tonight? No. The, the, you, you, that's it. You're going to eat that. We didn't have no choice. And Sunday, we didn't have no choice. You're going to church. It, 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 it wasn't no choice. Uh, uh, can I, do I feel, how do you feel today, George? <laughs> Kobe, you feel like going and represent? Do you want to praise the Lord? No, you go on the church. Mama, my stomach, it's going to hurt that church. <laughs> I got a headache. It's going to get healed at church. There was no such thing as an excuse. You had to be sick. I mean sick. And when you come home, you better not be done fixing it. You better stay in that bed. You couldn't, but, but free will. We got free will. God gave us free will, and guess what? We always chose wrong. Somebody will say something wrong with a person that always chose wrong. But that's us. Something was wrong with us. We was corrupted with sin, and we didn't know how to get rid of it. The enemy came in while men slept. Let's talk about the men sleeping. Yeah, we're going to talk about the men sleeping. <laughs> what does that mean when men slept? You're unaware, you're unconscious, you can't see nothing, you, you, you have a, a, a effect, it affects your behavior and your emotions. You didn't know sleeping does that, huh? It affects your behavior and your, and your emotions. Men slept. I, 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 everybody woke? Everybody woke? Say, you woke? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, now, now your wife's going to be looking at y'all, checking y'all. <laughs> so, yeah, hunt him. Hunt him. If he, don't, don't go to sleep. But you know what? We have a tendency to sleep because sleep, we tell ourselves, it relaxes us. But the problem is we, we relax at the wrong time. When men, he said, when the men slept. Now, the responsibility, after he planted the seed in it, it was Adam's responsibility to take care of the garden and keep his eye on Eve. But Adam went to sleep. I like what Pastor said. Pastor said he was trying to figure out how many peas to put on hippopotamus. And, <laughs> and he, he, just, he just went to, he, he just wasn't aware. That's why the serpent could come in and entice Eve and entice Eve. And sooner or later, she broke because he was asleep. Some of us men, we going to sleep at the wrong time. We, 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 we unaware of what's really going on in the heart of our children and our spouse because we sleep. We get up and say, I'm going to work. I'm back home. I'm ready to eat. Good night. You sleepwalking. You, you never stop to say, how was your day? What, what you been dealing with? What can I help you with? What's your struggles now? What, what, you, you're sleeping. And some of you, you're not, you, you, you take the job and say, well, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get to the top. But you're going to leave your kids at the bottom? You're going to make it to the top. You're going to be CEO, but your children won't know you. They're not going to remember when it was hurt and broken that daddy was there to build me up, put his arms around me, give me a hug, and wipe the tears from me. You, you, you never was there because you fell asleep looking for a promotion. Some, of, some, some, some men, I know be, I'm hard on it. I'm, I'm going to take our leg too. We, we get in this, this Nintendo game stuff and we fall asleep. Ask them what level they're on. I'm on 267. They, they, they're just playing it. And now they done, done fixed it so you can call somebody. Hey, you getting on? Yeah, we're we going to fight. We're going to play a game. We gonna, and, and, and you don't see who coming in the window or who going out the window. Because you sleep. 
You're not aware of what's going on. And that, that, that's a problem. That's one of the problems you have. When you're asleep, you never know what's going on. Somebody, can you wake up, all the furniture out the house. You, you, what, what's going on? I, I was asleep. How many times we saw on the news, parents in the house sleeping, kids down the street, and then somebody took them. Where, where were you? Well, uh, I was in the house sleeping. I, I told them to stay in the house. But you went to sleep on the job. While men slept, the enemy came in. Satan, Satan gonna come in. He, 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 he's not gonna, he, he, he's not gonna sleep. And then you know what he gonna do? He, he's so sly. He says, while men slept. Most time we go to sleep at night. That's when Satan do his work. He come in. Yes, sir. While you sleeping, he working. When you get up, the damage has already been done. And all you can say is, I fell asleep. I fell asleep. What, what, what kind of excuse is that? I fell asleep. Well, I, I can understand the, 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 the car gone, the furniture gone, the children gone, the wife gone, and we'll be there. what happened to everybody? I don't know, I fell asleep. When you fall asleep spiritually, worse things can happen. When you fall asleep spiritually, you, you wake up and you done lost your joy. You don't have no peace. You don't have no direction. You don't know where you're going. Why? Because you fell asleep spiritually. You, you, you fell asleep. That, well, when the last time you prayed? Well, I went to church Sunday. I prayed then. You're falling asleep. Spiritual damage is a lot harder to correct than getting another TV, getting another car. Spiritual damage, because when, when, when Satan come, he come in to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he come to do. When he leave, he don't want to leave nothing. But in this, in this day, he said, he came in and he what? He left. He sowed his seed and then he left. Psalms 127 and 1. It says, except the Lord build the house, the la they that labor, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman wake it, but in vain. How disheartening is it for you to wake up and know you're by yourself? It's, it's, like, it's like that, 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 that movie they play, uh, uh, Left Alone, Left Behind. You wake up, everybody gone but you. Oh, I bet you you holler then. You ain't gonna sleep no more. Jesus, I'm woke, come back. Pad back and pick me up. But that's what's sleeping. You, you miss it because you're sleeping. Somebody needs to say, wake up. It's not a time to sleep. Because you see, Satan has a way of, of, of getting into situation and doing things that we, we, we fail to see. Look, 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 at, look, at, look at this verse, he said, but while men slept, the enemy came in and sowed tares, that's weeds, among the wheat and went his way. Which are you, weed or wheat? Are you weed or wheat? 26, but when the blade sprung up and brought forth fruit, they appeared the tares also. 27, and the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou so good see? You see how he blamed the, the, the did it not thou so good see? Yeah, I know the seed was good. You went to sleep. Then he said, Wilt thou uh, no, he said, so good see from whence then has it tears? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. When you, let's get this other verse because I got something to say about this. And the servant said to him, will thou then that we go and gather them up? The second thing about sleeping. I told you uh, 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 sleeping, you don't see, you're unaware. But I told you also that it affects your behavior and your emotion. Yes, How many of you ever saw some, woke somebody up and they woke up all crazy? Hands, wiping, 
But they, they say, well, what, what, what's wrong? Cause you, when you fall asleep, your, 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 your body is resting, but your mind's still going. And sometimes they wake you up and you're already fighting. I don't know who you're fighting, Booger Bear or something, but you're fighting. So your emotions kick in. And you start to do things that's, that's, that's out of the ordinary. Your emotions make you, you jump up and say, what, 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 what? And they tell me, hey, it's time to get up with you. <laughs> Calm down. Your emotions kick in. These men, when they, when they found out that there was weed in the wheat, they wasn't thinking. They couldn't think. All they know is, it's messed up. You know what we're going to do? We're going to just yank up all of the weed out of there. He said, no, you're going to pull up the wheat with the wheat. The weeds and the wheat going to come up together because what, guess what? They done intertwine. The roots done got together. And when you, see, when, when, when you wake up, that's what we do. Um, men is y'all night tonight. When, when, we, when we wake up sometimes, they, they, they put us out there, they say, start to remind us of things we were supposed to do. You know you're supposed to cut the grass? Give me that lawnmower. No, no. And you grab the lawnmower and you start pushing. Now, it's 100 degrees outside, but they woke you up, and now you, 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 you're not thinking yes, to say, yeah, I'm going to get the grass, but it's going to be about 6.30 because it's hot out there. No, you, you're mad. You, you let your emotions get the best of you, and, and you, you don't like her telling you you should have cut the grass, so you grab that lawnmower, and you go out there, and you start pushing, and about 20 minutes, Frankie, what did the, the, the knees start to wobbling, and the, that he started to get, because you didn't think. And spiritually, we do the same thing. When we, we wake up crazy and, and why they say, uh, uh, you know, maybe we should be uh, praying more. Oh, get him, come on. Lord, I need you. Come on, Father. I tell you. No, no, no. You want to pray, huh? Come on. You start to go crazy because they woke you up with something you had fell asleep. You know it's your responsibility to pray. You know it's your responsibility to study the Bible. There's no real responsibility to lift them up closer to God. But when they tell you that, they woke you up because you wasn't doing it, and now you just go, get the Bible, we're going to read the whole thing tonight. <laughs> and you just start reading, start going. But that's not, that, you, 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 you're losing it. You're not thinking it. You're trying to pull up the wheat with the weeds. You don't want to calm down. You say, I, 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 I. You're right. You're right, we need to start reading. Where would you like to start reading, dear? <laughs> I love the book of John. <laughs> Shall we do this after supper? That, that's what you do <laughs> when you're calm. But, but a brother just can't do that. We just, it's something that clicks in us. I, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty, Frank. I do it too. I say, what? You didn't do that? Okay, I'm going to do it. It's dark. You know, I don't care. I'm going to go do it anyway. <laughs> That's what they made lights for. I'm going to put the light on and go do it. It's something when you get woke up and you're not aware, you, you just, your emotions take over and you just say things and do things. That's why so many of us done got in trouble when they say, we open our mouth and say, and you another. Oh, I didn't mean that, baby. Because they woke us up from something that we should have been doing and didn't do. And now we get crazy and just start doing doing things without, out of control, without prayer, without guidance, without seeking. We just jump in it and start doing it. And guess what? We mess it up again. And then, you know what we tell them? I can't, I can't please you. I, I don't do it, you cry. I do it, you cry. I don't know what to do. So y'all can't use that no more. I done told them already. So. <laughs> That's the problem we have when you fall asleep spiritually. You, you jump up and you want, we're going to start reading. And it lasts about two days. And you go right back in the rut. You start praying, you go right back in the rut. Because you, you, know, you didn't wake up. You got to find out what put them to sleep before you tell them to get to work. That's for the, the, the wife to do. Find out what put them to sleep first before you start. Well, and then you can get them. There. Now we can get on the same track. That was for free. That was for free. And it's so easy to sow a seed. How Satan came in there and sowed that seed? It's easy to sow a seed. Yes, sir. Any of y'all ever sowed seeds in somebody's life? Amen. Good or bad? Yes, sir. 
The bad seeds go down, I mean, them things come up quick. They go fast. You want, you want to sow a seed? You know how easy it is to sow a seed? Just tell somebody, uh, and we just use hypothetically a male and female, they, they, they marry. The phone rang. She have no problem with it. He take the phone in, yeah, yeah, go outside, go talk, it, it's good. But then somebody else come and say, yeah, you better watch them when they, when they go outside with that phone, you don't know who they're talking to. Now the phone rang. He pick up the phone and go outside. Where you going? I want to know who you're talking to. I want to know where you're going. Because somebody sowed a seed of deception. You was good all before. It never bothered you. But the enemy came in and sowed a seed, and guess what they're going to do? They're going to go their way. Your marriage all broke up, and, 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 and you know what they're going to say? Oh, I ain't got nothing to do with that, baby. That's, something. That's you and your husband. But you sowed the seed. It's so easy to sow seed. And we got to be careful of those seed sowers and their purpose. Especially if your marriage going, wait a minute, your, your husband left you 20 years ago. What you telling me that for now? They like to drop them seeds because some people don't like to see other people happy. Be careful about the seed sowers. Another thing we got to do, how seeds get sown. And, and we all have this. How many of y'all have a television in your house? Yeah, well, I, maybe I should start with the threes and the four. How many of y'all have at least three or four TVs there? Yeah. We have a TV almost in every room, some of them. They, they, it just, I just don't want to get away from it. I would, how many of y'all know the story of uh, Troy and Greek, when it was the Greek, the, the, the Odyssey? You, you remember that Trojan horse? He said the Greeks was fighting, trying to get into Troy. They couldn't get in. The boys were solid. They said, yeah, you can, I hear you knocking, but you ain't coming in. They, was good. they couldn't get in. They thought about it a minute. Just, huh. Let them know. Let, let them pretend like they won. Let's give them a gift. We're going to give you a gift. A horse. A horse because y'all are so good. And they looked at that horse and couldn't get into the city, but they give him a gift. So guess what Troy did? They opened the gates, drug that horse in there, closed them gate back. Oh, we, we parted. And, and, and the, the, the Greeks just got back and then, oh yeah, we, we won, we parted. Not knowing that the enemy was inside the horse. They let them party till they went to sleep. And then the enemy got out. When men slept, they came out. They was able to open the gates and let their people in. And you take this like you want. TV, radio, music, internet, all those things you can say something good about. The horse that were given to Troy, that was a good one. But there's an enemy in the inside. The Trojan horse. There's an end, and, and, and we never say, how many of y'all turn on your TV and even in the commercial, they got the LGBTQ, Y, or, yes, you, you, you can't, you, 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 it's everywhere. Certain pictures, you, I, I used to watch some of them pictures. I used to like, what, what's that, uh, 911? It, 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 uh, the the emergency, then all of a sudden, what the? Oh, no. And you know what? They're trying to sow a seed. The enemy is sowing a seed. He, he wants you to see this and say, I see it all the time. I'm comfortable. It's the norm now. It's norm. Normal for two men to be walking, holding hand. Don't you see it everywhere? So it must, and he's sowing a the seed. They might not never get you called. Because you are, you are, but they're after your seed. They, 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 they know you established and you solid, but they say, if I make it normal, we got to be careful what we let them watch. But you see, it's so easy, especially our younger generation, we give our kids a tablet, and we can go, they go do their fingernail, do their hair, go to the store, and that kid like this the whole time. And every now and then something pop up on the screen. They have a choice whether 
But if it sounds in colors and things, oh, what is that? That's Leroy and George. Oh. <laughs> and you never know the seed being. And you, your child come up 12, 13 years old, and all of a sudden they say, Mom, I like Lucy. What? Well, it's the norm. And you're going to say, where did you get that from? You fell asleep. Because it was easier to give them that tablet and not, I got to cook, hit a tablet. I got to go somewhere, hit a phone. I got to do this, take this here and this. And we never check. We never go back. We never search. We just let them go. And guess what? The enemy come in because the seed has been sown. You got to watch who's coming into your field. Who's putting seeds on your property? Let's go to another scripture. Look at this. The question is, are you weed or wheat? Are you weeds or wheat? How many of us would say we wheat? You can raise your hand. I ain't going to call nobody no weed. <laughs> we weed. How many of us can say we were weed? All of us was we. All of us was we. Go to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, 9 through 11. Let's, let's, let's read that. Look what that says. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators or idolaters or adulterers or effeminate or abusers of themselves with mankind. 10 nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11, look at this. And such were some of you, but ye were washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. So the question comes up, and I got a lot of questions sometimes. Why are we not tolerant of other sinners? Why, why are we not tolerant of the, the girl that's on the street or, or the one that's drunk or drinking or the one that steal? You, you ever seen these people, they stealing stuff and you say, boy, I, I, hope they, I hope they catch them. I hope they lock them all up. <laughs> They're breaking in, in people's stores and grabbing stuff. How many places you broke in? Nobody raised their hand. <laughs> How many things have you done? How many lies have you told? How many lives have you messed up? How, we look at, I'm not breaking in Neiman Marcus and grabbing no $50,000, $60,000 worth of stuff, but that candy bar you took was for somebody. It wasn't but 50 cents or something, but it's still stealing. We are very intolerant of people who done the same thing we done. We, we look at them different. Well, you know, now I'm a Christian. I walk with the Lord. Uh, you walk with the Lord, huh? Trouble haven't come yet. We'll see how close you are with the Lord. We have a tendency to look down on people that, that done the same thing we've done. And the only way we, we can recognize them is because we've done it. We, we know how to spot a thief. Look at them hands. Look at them fingers. They look sticky. Uh, you can tell. You can tell. And, and, and if you was one that, that lied, you say, see them shift their eyes? Boy, they'll lie to you in a minute. What we done, guess what? We recognize in other people. We recognize in other people. We might not want to confess it. We don't want to admit it. Well, well, you know, now I'm saved. Oh, I don't know why they would steal like that. That belongs to someone. We should never do that. Somebody say, check your record. Shh. We all got skeletons in our closet. And if everybody in here would open their skeleton, skeleton, this place would be full of bones. Because we all got some things we wish we'd never done. We had things that God had to, like that statement say, wash us from. And we was, we was guilty of everything that we'd done, and he knew it, and he had to justify us. He sanctifies. He set us apart. It wasn't nothing that we done. We, we wasn't smart enough. 
We wasn't wise enough, but we couldn't, we couldn't recognize what God has done for us. We can't see him doing it for somebody else. He saved us at our low place, but we look at somebody else and say, they're hopeless. There'll never be nothing. God is still on the throne. He's still got the same power he took to save you. He can save them. The same thing he did to deliver you, he can deliver them. But all of a sudden, we become intolerant. Oh, I, I, I wish they never would have made them drugs. Your pocket still smell of weed. You was guilty just like everybody else. But now that I've been delivered, I want to deny that it ever existed. No, the scar's still there. You can still remember what you used to do. Sometimes you, so, you don't know what happened. Somebody can tell you, you still got that. What? I had that? I, I don't remember. You were so messed up, you didn't know. But we have a tendency not to be tolerant of people that's in the, that was in the same place that we was in. And God saw us in our mess and said, I'm going to still take them. I'm going to still pick them up. But we didn't know how to do that. Let's look at Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Because we got we to deal with, with something that to be able to tell the difference between weed and wheat. You can't look at nobody and tell whether they weed or weed. Look at this scripture. Look what it says. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. We done all said, Lord, Lord. Lord, you've been good to me. Remember that song? Oh, no, y'all not old enough. Y'all not old enough. But anyway, that's a song. Lord, Lord, you've been good to me. But shall enter the kingdom. But he that doeth the will of the Father, which is in heaven. Go to the next one. Many will say unto me in that day, that's the day of harvest that he's talking about. In that day when judgment come, will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done wonderful works. 20, 23, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye work of iniquity. What a shocking sound to hear. Iniquity, let me tell you, iniquity is a depraved action from the heart that results in perversion. It's, 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 it's just something on the inside that makes you do stuff that you enjoy doing. But when you look at this here, he said, you work of iniquity. We have a problem with that because he said, I prophesied. Didn't we prophesy? Didn't we cast out devils? We, hit, we did, all, did one, many wonderful works. But the key was in thy name. Because when you think about the scripture, you remember when they called Jesus a devil? Jesus said, uh, Beelzebub can't cast out Beelzebub. He wouldn't do it. And when I got to that, I said, well, well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. If Jesus didn't do it and he cast out the devil, how can they be not accepted? Because he's, they did it in his name. He gave them the right, the authority to do it. It's pretty much like the rooster that, that crowed and convicted Peter or the donkey that talked to Balaam. I don't think you're going to see the donkey in heaven, but God used what he used because it's all his. And we belong to him. And, and he allowed them to use his name. But what else you notice about those, those three things? Those things that they mentioned, you notice that they was all service. They was all works. Not one scripture said, Lord, did not we praise you? Lift your name up. We exalted you. We magnified. None of it said, it says we prophesied. That's service. We cast out devils. That's service. We did many wonderful work. That's service. Why we want to serve before we worship? We, we're no good at worshiping, but we want to serve. And, and if all you want to do is serve, you can miss heaven. That, that, that's something I, I was in the church 40 some years. I was on, I, I did communion, I did the ushers, I did deacon, I was a deacon, I preached, I teach, I did all. 
Depart from me, you work of iniquity. All the things that listed was works. And by our works, we're not justified. I know faith without work is dead, and work without faith is dead. But if all you got is work, you're dead. If all you got is the work you've done, then you're dead. We have to be able to endure. We have to be able to see, Lord, what is it that you require of me that I won't be weed? We always weed. A conversion took place. Like that scripture said, he had to wash us. So in between the seed being sown and the judgment coming, that's what in verse 3 he said, we're going to let them go tell the harvest until the harvest. In between those two points, you have to come to the cross. You have to come to the cross. If you miss the cross, you won't miss judgment. If you miss the cross, you won't miss judgment. Whether you weed or tab, you're going to be at the judgment. You, you, you're going to be at the, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's the same thing you start. I'm going to give you a choice. God said, I'm, I'm going to give you a choice. But I want you to know, I'm going to sow the good seed. I'm going to I'm I'm die for you. I'm going to I'm going to go to the cross for you. I'm going to wash you in my blood. I'm going to do those things necessary to have you come to heaven, but I'm going to give you a choice whether you going to come to the cross or not. And we have to tell our children, we have to tell our grandchildren, we have to tell our neighbor, I know you're doing well. Yeah, you're doing a lot of service. You're doing a lot of good things, but have you come to the cross? Have you been, to the, have you been washed in the blood? Have you been set apart? Have you been sanctified? Have you been justified through Jesus Christ? And that's the, the key. That's, that, that's the answer. As we come to the close, our, our, our musicians can, can, can come. If you are unable to praise God, I, I know some of us, you know, we, we think it's, we sophisticated and we don't, we don't praise him. And, and I, I know we, we, we just have this thing about us that, well, you know, I never grew up, grew up praising him. But if you knew praise was standing between you and hell, would you praise him? Yes. If worshiping God was the thing to get you into heaven, would you worship? They sung the song like that chain's been, been broken. And guess what? You all, we all ought to hear the chains breaking. We all ought to know that we've been set free. But some of us take the shackle and put it back on us because what Satan tells us. He give us lies when God give us truth. And we rather believe a lie than the truth. That, 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 that's something when, when God say men would prefer lies than the truth. Lies like you are right like you are. And I hear this all the time from when, when people do one or two things. Oh, I don't want you to ever change. You don't want them to ever change. You got to grow. I, it don't matter how much good you've done it. In, in, in your praise, in your worship, you, you ought to grow. You, it, it's good. Sometimes you, you, you might be hard, find it hard to start. You, oh, yeah. Or you stand up or you lift your hands. But somewhere in life will teach you to grow. Because you see, to be a weak, you have to learn how to, to endure. As Christians, spiritually, we got to learn how to endure. The Bible says, Thou therefore endure hardness like a good soldier. We, don't, we, we know how to endure. As Christians, you see us, we get trouble, but we know how to endure. We get broken hearted sometimes. We're not exempt from that, but we know how to endure. We take our faith and, and when people push us down, 
we get back up because we have learned how to endure. When people walk away from us, that, that say they love us, that they care, and they turn their back on us, we don't crawl in a hole, we wipe tears from our eyes, we get back up, because we have learned how to endure. We've learned how to stand on faith when it's cool, the wind, the breeze is blowing, and we know how to stand on in faith when the storm is raging. We know how to stand on faith and endure when we're left alone and when we got everybody around us, we know how to, to endure. We just have to know how to endure in love. We got to learn how to endure in, in, in faith. We got to learn how to endure in grace. Give somebody grace to mess up. Give somebody grace to come to Christ. Give them, learn how to endure with them a little while long. I, I, I know it's been five years you've been trying to get them to accept Christ, but learn to endure just a little while longer and watch God move. We got to learn to endure in peace and in forgiveness. Because sometimes the same people you're trying to help will be the one that hurt you. But you got to learn how to endure in forgiveness. I'm going to get out the way because you don't want me there. But when you need me, call me. Because I forgave you before you even asked. That's what Christ did for us. And when, 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 we, when we are weak, that's what we do. We, we learn to forgive. And we learn how to live and endure like good soldiers. I thank you for your time. And I'd ask if... If any of you not sure whether you're weed or weed, I'm here to tell you it's easy to become weed. It's a change that's going to take place in your heart. You might not ever feel chill bumps or shake. Or you might not run around the room. But God is a God that searches the heart. And he knows the very intent of the heart. Like the scripture we read in, 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 in Luke, yeah, they, they did all those things, but God said, I, I peeped through all those things. I want to see what's in your heart. I want to know the intent of your heart when you say you love me. When you confess and say, Lord, yeah, I'm a sinner, he's looking at your heart. He want to know if you really realize that you are a sinner. That, that, that you need his grace, that you need his mercy. He, he looking in our hearts to say, is what you said, do you really mean it? And then when you say, Lord, I believe that, that you did die, that you was on the cross, that you rose on the third day, and you're seated at the right hand of the Father, you're still the Son of Man, and you're the Son of God. And once you believe that, and confess it with your mouth. You're saved. They might call you weak. They might call you bushes. They might call you junk. They might call you trash. But in your heart of hearts, you know that you've been saved and God knows. And he'll write your name in the Lamb Book of Life. And you can stand up and say, I, I know I've been changed. I know I'm different. And then we have to learn to let the kingdom of God come in us by accepting the truth that he gives. If you don't mind, we'll stand and we'll be dismissed. Father, we thank you for this time with you. We thank you for giving us your word and touching our hearts. We thank you for the moments that we spend with you, Lord, and in our hearts, we know we need to spend more time with you. Lord, forgive us for our shortcomings and for our mistakes and for all the times that we fell asleep on the job. But we thank for that you are God that never sleep and you are keeping God and you kept us all these years. Lord, we give you praise and we give you honor and we ask you now, Lord, as we leave this place but never your presence, that you would walk with us and remind us that you love us when we was yet sinners. Remind us that you saved us. Remind us that you delivered us. Remind us that you care and that you love us. Lord, and as we lay down on this night, Lord, we thank you for giving us peace. 
and that you'll watch over us while we sleep. And Lord, we give you all the honor and the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Love y'all. Y'all be blessed.